Hello everyone and welcome back to Liquid Evil Gaming. So, after using it for about 10 days, I'm finally ready to review the Topra Real Force 87U 55 gram uniform switch keyboard. Now, I have a couple other videos um, with this keyboard that I'd recommend you watch before this one, including an unboxing video and a what do to press switches feel like video where I get into greater depth about kind of how I can compare to press switches to how they feel based on switches you may be familiar with since it's kind of hard to describe to someone that's never used Topra and also the unboxing video where I'm not going to get into that again here and I cover some other points that I won't in this video so look for those links down in the video description below now assuming you've already watched those two videos and I hope you do this is the keyboard itself. It's kind of a traditionalist looking black keyboard. Uh, you've got that little bit of extra bezel at the top here, reminiscent of keyboards of old, along with the little kind of aluminum sticker logo up top here saying Real Force, which kind of gives it that very old school look and feel. I particularly opted for the all black or black and dark gray model. There is also a white model uh, with white keycaps and black die sub legends uh, but seeing as that I touch type I really didn't need that and I prefer the look of the black with the rest of my setup. So the keyboard itself has dark gray PBT keycaps and black die sub legends so they will never fade. Uh, the keycap texture is fantastic. They are easily on par with or better than most any keycap I have ever used and that stretches quite a few from Ducky Die Sub PBT to GMK ABS Double Shots. Um, I've used quite a few different keycaps and own a decent amount of them as well but I've used even more and these are definitely easily some of my favorites and the fact that they're stock keycaps is even more impressive. Uh, my one complaint is the ABS spacebar uh, which if you don't know why they did that, it's because it's much harder to do a space bar in PBT because PBT warps when cooling, so trying to keep a perfectly straight space bar is difficult. Uh, there are third-party alternatives on the market uh, designed by Matteo, uh, which do drop on mass drop on occasion that are PBT that you can buy, uh, so watch out for those if they redrop them. Otherwise, you are stuck with the ABS space bar, which will eventually shine and look a little bit different than the rest of the keys and with black especially the shine shows up a bit more in my personal opinion but other than that the stock keycaps are fantastic um, the stabilized keys don't actually have or what usually stabilized keys don't have stabilizers at all they just go right on the switch because of the way the Topra switch works and they feel fantastic um, you really can't distinguish them at all from the other keys really um, so they kind of have the inherent advantage that CoStar stabilizers do on a cherry based board where they feel the same as the other keys but without the hassle of dealing with changing keycaps with those god awful wire stabilizers. The spacebar can be a bit tricky in fact I don't even want to try to remove it again. Um, to get to it you really have to remove both alt keys and use your fingers underneath both sides and pull up with even force. If you try to do it like a traditional cherry space bar and lift up one side and then the other, uh, chances are you will break a stabilizer pin. Uh, so be very careful about that. Uh, they are quite easy to break if you don't know what you're doing. And by all means, do not use the included keycap puller and it is crap and it will scratch your keycaps. Use a wire-based puller or at the very least the plastic tab ones and be careful. But the included metal one, horrible keycap puller. The switches themselves feel very snappy and offer a great feedback feel. Um, one of the reasons I opted for the 55 gram version is I've always really liked Cherry MX Clears, but the problem I had with them is that they were very fatiguing after a while and really got to both my tendonitis and carpal tunnel and it caused me a great deal of pain if using them for more than 20 or 30 minutes. Even though these are 55 grams and have a great tactile feel, I don't have that problem with these. They're so smooth and the butter bottoming out is so cushioned that 
I don't experience that same level of fatigue. Now using the 55 gram switches for a long, long period of time, say for an hour and a half, two hours, um, they still are a little fatiguing, but nothing unbearable by any stretch. Uh, slightly more so than my MX Browns are, uh, but not nearly what you would expect for being a 55 gram rated switch. So for me, the 55 gram is great. If you're somebody that's a coder, um, or you know, you're a typist for a living and you sit at the keyboard for seven, eight, nine hours a day, the 50 gram, 55 gram may be a little bit heavy for you, even as smooth as it is. So I'd recommend trying a 45 gram first. Um, so with that said, still though, I like the keys. They're very snappy, tactile and responsive. And that tactile bump is right at the top of the key. Um, so it is something a little bit different to get used to if you're used to cherry keys and say you've never used any other alternatives such as Alps. Um, so do bear that in mind. It's not kind of, you know, almost halfway down or a little bit down into the key like Cherry Mix is. It's just right there when you push the key. Uh, it does have that very much trademark thock sound that the Topre key switches are famous for. And it is a very pleasant sound while still being somewhat subtle and quiet. It's going to be louder than your average membrane keyboard that you may hear in an office setting, but it is much quieter than bottoming out on any Cherry MX keycaps. And in fact, I would say it's still quieter than even my O-ringed Cherry MX boards in my personal opinion, just because the thock sound is much more pleasant and while audible, doesn't seem to irritate anybody, including my wife who is very susceptible to irritating or annoying sounds. Um, and this keyboard does not bother her in the slightest, even while being right behind me in the same room reading, it doesn't distract her at all. Build quality is very solid. Uh, keyboard has a very, very good heft to it. Um, it does not feel like this thing is going to break anytime soon. Uh, the plastic is very stiff. There's no perceivable flex or twisting to the board at all. Um, as mentioned, the keycap quality is fantastic. Underneath here, you unfortunately do not have a removable cable, which is one of, if not my only complaints about the board itself. Um, I think that's kind of a shame considering the cost of the keyboard and the fact that other Topre alternatives such as the Nova Touch or Happy Hacking Keyboard offer a detachable cable. Uh, the feet do not have rubber on them, which is a shame. However, the keyboard is so heavy that I've never really found it a problem. It's not moving around, but it still would have been nice to just include. Of course, I'm going to do that in the video, but whatever, I'm not going to edit it out. You can laugh at me if you would like. Um, here are the dip switches right here on the back. I honestly have not used those yet, and I tend to typically really not, uh, but I believe they are so you can swap the control and caps key if memory serves, as the board does come with two extra key caps. Uh, to take the board apart, if you have to for any reason, it's actually very easy. There are just little snaps here that you can actually push in with your finger and pull the entire board apart. There are no screws on the external case, making it very easy to open should you need to for any reason. All in all, this keyboard is very, very well built, um, is an absolute pleasure to type on. In fact, the first 24 to 48 hours I owned it, I found myself occasionally, as strange as this may sound, just pushing a keycap or two on the way by as I was walking to do something else, just because I actually enjoy the feeling of them that much. It almost feels, the best way I can say it, is Topre feels like a massage for your fingertips. It feels as though you are getting a happy ending for your fingertips, and I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of uh, laughs and flack for that, but whatever, it's the best way I can describe it. Um, as I'm sure you can probably tell by now, to comment on the switches themselves, they have easily become my favorite switch, surpassing Cherry MX Browns and Cherry MX Clears as my two former favorites. Um, along with the Topre switch brings the elimination of the possibility of key chatter down the road, uh, since there is no switch coupling. So that's something that's very welcome, as I have had a board or two in the past that have had key chatter, uh, usually cheaper ones. I haven't had any of my really good ones, like my calls do it or anything. But it's just nice to know that it's not something I'm going to have to worry about. Um, the only long-term worries I kind of have for the board is I have heard that the rubber domes on Topre can stiffen up over time, making the keyboard feel a little stiffer. Um, obviously not something I can comment on yet, as I haven't had the board all that long. 
I had used two tilt prey key switches for a little bit here and there before doing this you know, video and buying this board, but not extended use. This is the first tilt prey board I've ever owned and used for a long term period of time. And I love it. I really don't have, other than the non-removable cable, I don't have any other complaints about the board. It feels great, build quality stellar. I love the feeling of the 55 gram tilt press switch. They are absolutely fantastic and have won me over without a doubt. Now that's not to say I'm going to stop using Cherry MX entirely, as it is a unique feel and I like having that variety. I still have my Cull Cherry MX Brown hooked up in the other room to my other computer of which I may stream games to time to time and play on the big TV in the other room. Um, but this will be my daily driver for the foreseeable future as I enjoy it quite dearly. Um, and the other, a nice thing too, I forgot to mention earlier, forgive me, that is nice is on the secondary layer, I don't know if you can pick that up on the camera, but there's actually a built-in numpad on the function layer underneath the keys here with everything from plus to minus to all your number keys so if you need to use the numpad real quick and you don't like the number row which I'm perfectly used to the number row but whatever you have that option there so it's kind of a nice thing and something I've never seen on a 10 keyless before although I'm sure there are other boards that exist with it it's the first one I've experienced with it um, the two lights on the keyboard here you've got the caps lock and the num lock are not overly bright nor distracting uh, and are well appreciated that you can see them through the keycap with that little blue dot there. But really that's kind of sums up my feelings of the board and the toe press which is a whole. I love them both. Um, again the only flaw I could really find was the non-removable cable and I really looked for anything I could to any kind of have a you know cons of the board because it's not as though I don't own other keyboards. I own several, you know, Coles, Tesoros, Guns, lots and lots of boards and different switches, Pokers, MX Blues, Browns, etc. So I'm hardly hurting for other keyboards. It's not as though I bought this board and it's like, oh my god, it's expensive. It's my only keyboard. I have to justify it and I have to say it's good just because. I could easily sell this and make 85 to 90% back of what I paid for it if I wanted to. Or just use one of my other keyboards and go back to it and again resell it and take a very very small loss so i'm not saying this just trying to justify the cost as some opponents of the topre switch like to say and no it does not feel like a glorified rubber dome i'm sorry it does not and no it does not feel like sliders over rubber dome either it is a very unique feeling switch and i've yet to try anything else that can truly compare to it I know others have said, you know, that it may feel like a just smooth rubber dome or it may feel like sliders over rubber dome or and I don't really think it does. It just has a very unique, smooth, tactile feel and it doesn't get nearly as tiring and fatiguing as rubber domes or cherry MX or even uh, sliders over rubber dome do. I really like the board. I can see buying more Topra keyboards in the future as I've enjoyed this one that much. My final review on the keyboard would be a 9 out of 10. Docking at one point only for two reasons. One, you've heard me repeat multiple times at this point, the non-removable cable. To me, that's a bit disappointing. Yes, you can open the board up and you can replace it with certain options of cables, for example, from Pexon. However, I don't feel as though you should have to do that as an end user. I much greatly appreciate a removable cable if they ever do a future uh, revision of the board. My other complaint, and this is what I'm sure most can relate to, even though I had no problem paying the price the board commanded, and even though I would do it again, I do think that they are overpriced. I understand that there's a lot of research going into the capacitive technology here and that it does come with very high quality caps and the build quality is great. That said, I still think that the price is a bit high and could probably come down a little more. It is lower than what it used to be before I got into Topre. Now you can usually pick these up for about 200 to $205 US. 
Now, I have heard, and I haven't researched this thoroughly, forgive me, that at times they were as high as 250 to $300. Even at 205 I think they could come down a little. Um, I think maybe 180 might be about the sweet spot, um, considering that you can often find the Nova Touch for about 160 and that comes with subpar stock keycaps. Um, so I don't think it's unreasonably priced, but I do think it could still come down some, or at least if they're going to keep this price point, give me the removable cable option, and I would think that the difference would kind of be negligible for adding that feature. But still, I give it a very, very solid 9 out of 10. It is currently taken over uh, as my favorite keyboard, replacing my Cole 87 ES MX Brown board with the Ducky Die subs as my current favorite, and I will be using it for quite some time. Um, no matter what I said about this board, I knew I was going to piss off somebody because there are a lot of people that do not like Topra switches and they claim as though it's just a glorified rubber dome. Personally, I think the majority of those people have just never used Topra for an extended period of time, whether that be due to not being able to afford it or the availability of it in their particular area, or perhaps they just have no interest and they're perfectly satisfied with their current Cherry MX or Alps or Buckwing Springboard, and that's all fine. The only thing I would ask is that going forward, if you keep calling Topra a glorified rubber dome, at least spend some extended time with the switch before you say that. Form your own opinion. Don't just go with the I'm going to mock Topra crowd just because it's different. Because it doesn't feel like a glorified rubber dome. And again, I do think a lot of people are saying that just for the sake of saying it and have never owned or used Topre for an extended period of time. I'm sure there are exceptions, but for the most part, I think that's to be true. I personally love the switches and would wholeheartedly recommend them to anybody. But as always, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, rate, and subscribe. Feel free to ask any questions about the Topre switches or the board in general in the comment section down below, and I will respond and answer them to the best of my ability. Thanks for watching. Have a good one, everyone.